The air quality lately has been a concern to many people, especially those who have uh, problems breathing. And uh, some cases over the last two days was a problem for everybody, regardless of whether you have asthma or whatever. Uh, with us right now via telephone, staff weatherman Bob Kukin. Robert, good morning to you. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Bob. Excuse good morning, Bob. So, Bill, what, uh, Bill, Bob, what's the story here? I, I know it's, this all kind of started with Canadian wildfires and the, the northwesterly breeze bringing that air down this way. Right, right. Well, we've had a situation over the last week or so. It's been a little longer than that, even before the fires became more prominent, where the pattern itself was kind of stuck. Um, it's They call it an omega block, as far as what happens with the jet stream, where it gets all curled and curved up, and it looks like the Greek letter omega, where you get the middle portion of the country that's been receiving all the storm conditions and the, uh, you know, the more humid weather. And then we've been on the other side of that, the very dry side. The air comes in out of the north. It's cooler. And so between all the dryness up in Canada, which helped provoke the fires, and the cool northerly flow coming out of there, we've had that coming down, and there was nothing to kick it out of the way. The uh, pattern was really blocked. And that's starting to ease up now, and uh, noticeably so over the weekend. We're still going to have – some of the smoky, hazy stuff going on today, but nothing like yesterday. Um, and it kind of comes in waves, too, as far as the intensity. There'll be times where it's, you, you kind of really notice it, and then for a while it seems like it kind of lets up and it goes away. Um, but it's dissipating. We're in better shape heading into the weekend. And once the air starts to clean itself out a little bit and uh, that thins out, the uh, UV rays of the sunshine now become more our usual, more prominent summertime uh, concern. And it's going to get hotter. We're going to get up in the 80s to near 90. And the risk for sunburn is going to be way back up because you're not going to have the smoke blocking some of the UV rays. So we're going to get back to a more seasonal situation. Bob, this is going to be a very uh, uh, strong El Nino year. What is that going to do to our weather? Well, we're going to see because the jury's still kind of out as to how strong it's going to be. It's been kind of back and forth. But the patterns that we're seeing right now are indicating that we're going to get back to a more of an average kind of season. We've been certainly on the cool side here for a while. It's going to look like the second half of summer is going to become a little more typical. We're certainly going to get back to warmer, warmer temperatures, a little warmer than average. And that's going to bring the increased chance for some rain in here, too, which we also really need. And uh, that comes next week, Monday, Tuesday. looks like a good chance for some rain. And uh, along with that pattern shift is going to bring the increasing chance for some more wet weather in general. So some good things coming. So, Bob, what made it? What made that smoke stay so low in the atmosphere? Um, usually we don't see that smoke kind of hazed so low. Was there like a high-pressure system pushing that down, or, or how, how did that work? Pushing it down, and also just the sheer amount of smoke. The, the, the fires were, you know, extremely large, and just the sheer amount of smoke in the air and the aerial coverage allowed it to sink further down. The air would normally sink to a point anyway, whereas if you, in the cooler air mass that's in here, the, the, as the winds are coming in out of the north, and the cooler air, cooler air sinks, so uh, that gotcha. draws it down closer to the surface. If we had the other wind flow and the warmer air were coming up, it would be pushing it more up into the atmosphere, and it wouldn't be quite as bad here at the surface. Bob, this has been the greatest weather spring of my life. I'm 60, and I don't remember a spring that has lasted like a month and a half. It seems to have been between 72 and 82 for, uh, I don't know, forever, and I'm enjoying it like crazy. However, a little bit of rain would be nice, especially for those who make their living farming and for those of us who have planted tomatoes, peppers, flowers, whatever, around the house. Yes, sir. You are totally correct about that, even front lawns that are getting kind of crunchy. Yes. Um yeah, no, better, as I said, better things are coming next week. It's good. Things are going to level out, get a little more seasonal. We do have a best chance of rain, I think, coming Monday, Monday night. Uh, there'll be a system coming out of the Great Lakes and the Plains kind of converging and moving on through. Temperatures next week a little closer to average to lower 80s during the day instead of the middle 70s. So that's going to allow a little extra heating and we'll get a little more uh, humidity going out of the south and that's going to increase our daily chances for a pop-up shower too so um we didn't yeah, have I think we're much snow if any in the winter and there hasn't been much rain in the spring are we just in one of those cycles uh, where it's just going to be more of a dry year and overall yeah it's starting out that way there's uh some indications that later on in the season and especially toward the 
fall, winter, that we'll start to see some change and get more precipitation. But the other thing is with the precipitation, we saw it in, like, in bursts and dumps all at once. You get no rain, no rain. Oh, three inches of rain that weekend. That's great, you know. Um, there was no consistency to it. It was the earth wasn't allowed to process it and retain it very well. So that didn't help things either. At what point do we consider ourselves in an actual drought? Is there a... a, a... The, there's a drought index, and we've already been on the edge of the um, the moderate drought for a little while. It's been a slight drought over a good part of the east for some time. Um, but, again, I think this is going to help next week to get us out of that situation. We're over eight inches of rain or moisture short for the since first of the year of where we need to be. And uh, we'll pick some of that up the second half of June. Yeah, the last time we were in severe drought here was around 2001, 2002, and a lot of the wells are in dry. I hope we don't see the same thing. Bill, how, how are the water levels at the river nearby your home? Uh, well, that's it's not a real factor because uh, it's controlled by the dam, mm-hmm. and uh, when they release, the water's up and down. So uh, it's right now it's just about average. Very good. Bob, thank you so much for your time this morning. Anything to leave us with, sir? Um. Enjoy the weekend. We've we've kind of toughed out a tough week here, but it's going to get back to normal. And uh, I don't have any special words of wisdom other than, uh, you know, make make the most of the great weather that's coming. And look forward to some rain because I think finally we can uh, see some of that in our future. Hey, is the rest of this summer, is this going to be considered to be an average summer or eventually above average temperatures, below average? What do you know? I'm thinking that by the end of summer, when we put all the numbers together, it's going to be a fairly average summer. We certainly yeah. started out on the cool side, um, May into June. Uh, June's probably going to level out a little below average, but we're going to get to July and August. And they look to be, at least right now, the uh, climate prediction maps and that are pretty straightforward, average to a touch above. So I think when we're done, it's pretty average. Yeah, uh, We'll probably get a hot spell, as we always do. We'll get a hot stretch in there late july into august but, bob, uh, bob you're the weatherman but i still have some contact with my oceanographer friends and uh, uh lanino has been here for the last four three or four years which gave us some much milder uh, temperatures but i'm understanding it's going to be a very uh, uh high energy el nino year the el nino is going to be higher than what it has been in the last several years that could be a real perturbation on the climate if that in fact does happen or well, that, the weather that was i should say yeah you are correct. That would yeah. stir things up a good bit, and it would be a change. We've been yeah. locked in that pattern for a while. So. Exactly, yes. Mm-hmm. Bob, take care, man. Much appreciated. My pleasure. Thanks, guys. Thank Great you, Robert. Weekend. You too. Staff weatherman Bob Kukin at uh, 815.